Hello everyone and welcome back to another day of Road to TCG Worlds 2017. Now, as many of you have requested, and I did ask in the previous two videos when I analyzed the Anaheim results, um, a lot of you people want to see expanded, or rather want to see the format that fit, want to see featured the format that is the one corresponding to the next big tournament at least in north america which is the main um public i guess that sees my videos so having said that um st louis is happening this week so i'll be reviewing two decks um this week that are expanded and i will be doing it for both the spanish and the english videos so i said before i would do expanded english and standard spanish but it's a little bit easier to just do expanded in both and yeah so coming off of san jose sun and moon is released so what i'm going to be reviewing this week is one of the most talked about decks um like since sun and moon released which is decidui size Beetle. um many people argue that decidui is definitely not better than crobat there are other believers in the thing because it pretty much um, wrecks the mirror match as well, kind of potentially. Um, there's many different things you can or that can happen. So I haven't played expanded in a very, very, very long time, and so and so yeah. Um, hopefully, I won't do too too bad. Um, size me to CGI though. Like, what's the logic behind this instead of Crobat? Well. Um, Crobat is a one-time use, and you need to use your super scoop ups. Whereas once Desudi hits the field, um, like after you use one Desudi's ability three times for three different turns, then you've gotten more mileage out of Desudi than Crobat, and then it can only grow from there because Crobat is limited to once once you evolve, whereas Desudi is unlimited as long as you can as long as you can attack. So, pretty important to know that. Um, Desudii being grass type also threatens um, opposing seismitoads, which is great. Um, 90 damage does KO things like electric and things like that. And its ability is really good or better in expanded, I believe, than it is in standard, simply because things have lower HP, like the EVs, um, opposing Rowlets, um, you have the Vespi, um, the combis. So. Um, like you can potentially, if you get one out, then maybe you can target an Archeops um, in the pack. And it's also a bit easier to manipulate the damage. And once, if you get two Desidii out, like the extra damage coming in for your Seismitoad is definitely going to, to start piling up against your opponent. Um, I can't say how big it is for X matchup or whatever because I haven't played Expanded in a very long time. Um, I am considering next season to attend or try to attend expanded regionals and therefore make um, better use of or rather have more knowledge about expanded but as of now like I'm just gonna try to play out the best I can and this is today's deck and then on Wednesday I will be featuring Evel Talmaxis which is the deck that won um, the last expanded regional so hopefully this covers like the hype and the tried and tested um, solid decks that are in expanded. Um, the list is pretty simple: a four 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 DCGI line for size Mito DX. Um, it's a Pokemon you want to attack with, you want to start with it. So um, two Shaman for support and one Lugia as a potential late game finisher. Um, we have Computer Search. That's definitely one of the best cards in the format um one a spec per per deck which is kind of like the c moves i guess or the gx attacks um you also get a gx attack from decidui which could potentially come in handy to recycle verse seekers to recycle hypnotoxic lasers to recycle dces that's that could potentially be really important so decidui also brings that to the table as well um, the supporter lineup is pretty straightforward, 4 Sycamore, 3N, 1 Lysander, 1 Colrus, 1 AC, and 1 Zero Sick. Um, you could argue, you could argue rather, that a second Lysander would be good here, 
um, so that you can lock something in the active and then start raining down damage on, on a real threat on the bench. Um, so there's room to make, or like you could make room for that. You could drop a Sycamore potentially, or an end because you do have the extra draw power off of Cold Rest, which is really great. Um, only three stadiums, which like this deck isn't really looking for a super explosive start, like getting two Desidia into play along with Fireplum or something like that, like you would expect in, in standard. So running only three Forest of Giant Plants instead of four kind of seems okay. Um, there's also the fact that um, uh, I was going to say something important and I slipped my mind. But anyways, I'll keep talking and it'll come back to me. Um, 4 vs Seeker, 3 use the supporters, 4 Hypnotoxic Laser, 4 Root Trouble of course to search for your for your Pokemon and evolution lines. Only one level ball, um, 2 would be optimal I think, but it's not um, like the end of the world if you only have the one. And then there's always a big dilemma between um, Fighting Fury Belts or Muscle Band, like even though it's only 10 extra damage, it can actually make a difference. Um, especially when you're only dealing 30 damage. Um, the difference between 40 and 50 can be a difference between a 3 hit KO, no, a 4 hit KO and a 5 hit KO. Um, obviously, with Desudii, that matters a little bit less, but it could be the difference between a 3 hit KO or a 4 hit KO. And any extra turn your opponent has, even under item lock, means it's an extra turn they can have to figure out a way to get out of the item lock. And the energy is the energy split is pretty simple: four DC, um, three grass energy. I was thinking just now that maybe you could drop one grass energy for a special charge potentially, um, in case you face off against something with energy denial. Uh, but I feel like this is fine, at least for now. So yeah, that's the deck and. Like I said guys, I can't promise you that I will not be misplaying, like I misplay already in the videos, I know that, and I mean, a lot of people criticize that, but you have to take into account that I'm doing videos, well I hope um, many people take into account the fact that I'm doing videos in not my, like not my first language, and then I'm also um, trying to be fluent and be coherent with what I say and what I do and I try to play to my best so I have to juggle between all those three things different language um, talking and trying to explain in a good way and then making the optimal play so it's not exactly easy and I like it many people will tell me oh, but you play so bad in the videos how can you win tournaments or how can you do well in real life well in real life i'm thinking in whatever language i want and i'm not speaking out loud and i'm just focused on what's happening with me and my opponent so it's kind of different or rather very different um so yeah hopefully we won't have trouble finding any matches because um i'm sure many people are testing for st louis which is the next regional and yeah so we start Rowlet now this is one of the issues that many people were talking about with the deck like if you don't start Seismitoad if you want the turn 1 or turn 2 lock you are absolutely forced to find the the floatstone which is probably not ideal now my opponent flips over a Sableye that could be an issue that could actually be an issue um if this is Sable Garb, that's gonna be really annoying. And it looks like it is. <laughs> it actually looks like it is. Wow. So yeah, that's one of the th <laughs> that's one of the big threats from from expanded, I guess. Uh, but um, how do you say it? A Seismitoad should be able to deal with this, maybe. Wow, my opponent discards my Seismitoad. <laughs> my opponent actually decides to discard my Seismitoad. Okay. Um, does that change anything? Probably not. I'm just gonna Sycamore here. Um, I lose the energy. I lose 2 Desidui, which could end up hurting me. Man, just look at this. If I had top decked, 
that um, if I had top deck that size me toad, I would have been in an incredible position. I do flip heads here though. Um, can my opponent do, do stuff to my hand? Sure he can. So I'm gonna play out as many cards as I can. He could also delinquent, that's true. But hey, maybe I'll take a Gao on this table eye. If he stays asleep, which he does, that's absolutely great. That is actually great. And I might even it might even be worth it to attach another energy to my Rowlet. <laughs> to deal 20 damage to that Sable Eye. Okay. Sycamore means no delinquents, which is good. Um I might end up attaching a DCE to my Rowlet here. I actually might end up doing that. And I probably won't get access to my abilities past this turn. But that's okay, I think. <laughs> Sable Carp is just... It's a very... Um, like a high-skilled deck. But I would never feel comfortable going into a tournament with... With it. Like, so many things can go wrong. There's an Enhanced Hammer, so that means a DC, my DC will get discarded 100%. And the Crushing Hammer is Tails, so that's cool. Um, relying on opponent, like, relying on conflip, coin flips is never good. The fact that you can Junk Hunt is great. Oh, now the old trouble, which could have given me the Seismic Toad. If you attack with Seismitoad once here, you're golden. You are absolutely golden. And he chooses to prevent abilities off of the guard. <sighs> okay, if I attack for 20 here with Leafage, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, so that I don't discard my DC. I could have Sycamore here, but I generally didn't really want to. <laughs> my opponent is happy that I end him. Um, dart tricks. I can't use abilities though, right? I can't use abilities. If I had a DC here, like I could maybe Ultra Ball into Seismic Toad and then Sycamore next turn. Um, but hey, I'll just sharp play Quill here to the active. Um, if he doesn't retreat, then Sableye will get knocked out coming into my turn and he stays asleep so we have the guaranteed KO on the Sableye. Um, Team Flurry Grunt, that's absolutely fine by me. I could also go for the Desidrii play. Um, oh wait, I could also Lysander the Garp now. That's something I can do. I thought Life Dew um, ran out at the end of the turn for some reason, like Klefki, but it actually doesn't. So, yeah. If I attack once with Seismito, though, that should be game. Well, maybe not. Maybe it won't be game, because he does have um, Team Flare Grunt, but he already used it, so he probably only has um, one more Zerosic. Maybe he might have two, though. Might have to two team flare grunts. Okay, so he flips tails once again. Pretty lucky. That's four tails in a row for my opponent. Get a sigma of my prize cards. Not the card I really wanted to see. And he promotes the Travish, which makes sense. I top deck the DC. Wow. AC discards all cards attached. Okay. So, I don't want to play any more Rowlets, there's no reason to do that. Do I even want to Sycamore here? I don't think I do. I actually don't think I do want to Sycamore here. Um, that DC top deck is amazing. And it's gonna come down to, does my opponent, or can my opponent find um, zero six in time. It's gonna come down to that, but I'm just gonna quake and punch here. In an ideal world, I well maybe I should seek more to try to find my my muscle band. Maybe that was too conservative, and potentially Lysander as well. Uh, 
he immediately has the Tinkler Grunt. Yeah, now that's a big issue. Um, that's definitely a big issue here. Uh oh. Okay, I find the computer search, which is cool. The computer search, I'm gonna discard the other two Rowlets. And I'm gonna find a DCE. Um, he left the Trubbish, so thanks to the Fighting Fury belt, I will be able to take a KO. And potentially at this point in time, I might. Like, does he have, or does she have, I don't know, um, a third. A third Team Flare Grunt, or is Erosic already? Like, immediately no she goes for the end i'm assuming she based on the avatar but i actually don't know <laughs> i actually don't know and yeah here's where dci will actually come in handy i have the floatstone and if he removes the dc <clears throat> i can retreat or i can well i can't retreat never mind uh, but i could potentially use dci in order to in order to to use the attack and I'm using the Ultra Bolt simply to thin out my deck but yeah I can use Desi attack to recover TCEs or things like that but my opponent will probably not KO me though but here I just Quaking Punch and wait could have end maybe I should have end once again I guess I'm playing like in, ex well, like in standard maybe being a bit too conservative with my resources but no my opponent simply passes so I generally think this should be game um, I get another DCE which is great in case my opponent does remove it I could even attach it immediately like there's no reason not to because he can only play one supporter either Serosic or Team Flare Grunt so that should be enough to guarantee I keep the lock Right? Which, that really should be enough. So yeah, looks like we're gonna get a win off of off of off of purely Seismitoad. Um Desi obviously hasn't done too much. Although I guess the first KO on the Sableye was due to Rowlet, maybe. <laughs> oh well. Erosic, yeah. Wow, he actually removes the floatstone instead. Okay, that's a little bit worrisome, but what I can do is attach that. I can remove the life queue here, and that means I get access to my feather arrow, and I'm attaching the grass energy just in case he lies under. And there we go. So, yeah, that seals the match. That definitely seals the match. And wow, I'm pretty pretty happy with that, with how that worked out. <laughs> 225 coins for our efforts, and let's find another game. Let's find another game to see. <clears throat> to see what happens here. Um, this you try wasn't a factor um, I even I would even say it was a liability in this case because of the fact because of the high retreat cost I mean the fact that Rowlet could attack meant that it was more useful I guess than than Subat and or Golbat I don't know and it looks like we might actually be up against um, Seismito Crobat this time based on my opponents um, based on the previous screen and we wow we actually get an incredible hand here an actual incredible hand I'm not gonna bench the Rowlet because then that would force me to find the floatstone it is the mirror match so wow um, I'm gonna be able to get the turn one 
lock on my opponent if he doesn't end me. Um, thankfully, I even at turn one gets his. Well, at turn one gets his will actually do nothing against me at this point. And I don't know, just like powering up the active seismic toad should me should give me enough breathing room to power up one Desidui eventually to get a KO on my on the seismic toad perhaps. Touches a water energy and retreats. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. But if I manage to get some abilities going, and he will Juniper, so she will once again. <laughs> not he. She will. Um, wow! Already three verse seekers in the discard pile. That's really unfortunate. That's actually really unfortunate. Um, okay. So what I want to find now is my stadium and floatstone and or either muscle band or um, fighting fury belt to match his wow 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 and I could even threaten the subats but I don't think that's worth it um, he's gonna pile up the damage on me so I should pile up the damage on him because he will be dealing 10 more damage for now at least wow I actually have no words for this. I actually... <laughs> that was insanely lucky. That was absolutely insanely lucky. Two turn one Desideyes with the luck going and with the double float zone and a Versus Seeker in my hand to Colrus once again next turn. Wow. Wow, wow, maybe I should have been going to St. Louis and running this deck. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, like, I'm sure I could do well in an expanded regional. Um, I mean, I could end up with a positive record, is what I mean, because it's not like I'm unfamiliar with the cards, you know? It's just that I've never played in that format in particular, or a tournament of that format in particular, or the, other than the League Cup. In other than the League Cup in in London, but 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 um, if I'm going to buy an airplane or buy a flight, I'm not gonna buy an airplane. If I buy a flight and then I go to and I spend on the hotel and then food and whatever, like I it I don't know. It's hard to justify. To just do well for me at least because it's not like I don't have infinite money so um, at least in in the um, in the standard tournaments like I'm used I'm more used to the format it's the one that I, that I actively practice and play in so even though I haven't done too great and by that I mean I haven't made day two in in any of the tournaments I've played in so far I still think um, I still think it's a, a smarter decision to to go that route. Okay, so I'm not a fan of my current hand. I have too many supporters, but I definitely go for the seismic toad here, and I guess I attach an energy to my seismic toad and the fighting fury belt, of course. Uh, we are up against Volcanion, which is interesting because sure I hit for weakness, but it's not like I hit for for infinite damage. If I can put the Volcanion to sleep, no. Can attach one floatstone. Would I bench the other seismic toad and attach the other floatstone? Maybe. I don't know how useful the extra damage counters from the CGI will be. <sighs> but I'm gonna pass for now. I'm actually gonna pass for now. Now, in between turns, he goes up to 20, then I deal 80 more, 110. Maybe Desijai will actually matter here. Maybe Desijai will actually make a big difference. There's one Vulcanian. And another female avatar. That's interesting <laughs> apparently three female players were up against i don't know if they're female or not i don't know if you can change that i actually don't know if you can change that 
Um, to deal 220 damage, my opponent needs 3 Volcanion EXs abilities. So, I'm hoping that will be difficult to pull off without um, access to items, hopefully. Like, no access to energy retrieval. Um, retreating should be an issue for my opponent as well. But yeah, I mean, she hasn't had the super explosive start you would like with Volcanion. But there's still room for her to do that. No supporter, really? Steam up. Did she already use the stadium? Yeah. Okay, yeah, there's a sycamore. Discarding Ranger, Verse Seeker, and another energy. Okay, so I think she played the Max Elixir before, or rather after the Professor's Letter, which is really bad. Honestly, that's really bad. You're literally making Max Elixir have less odds by doing that. So never play Max Elixir after Professor's Letter. Or rather, never play Professor's Letter before Max Elixir. If you have them both in your hand. <laughs> it makes no sense to do that. You're only hurting yourself. Anyways, there's the first power here. 10 extra damage to the Volcanion, so... 20. <sighs> that top deck, though. Gonna lose two Decidui. It's not the end of the world, but it makes it less likely that I find a Decidui, that I set up one. Um, wow, and there's the other two. <laughs> there's the other two. So I probably won't be able to to Sycamore next turn. I'll have to call rest. And yeah. If I can set up the TCDI, then I can take a game on the Baby Volcanion by using the ability. So I need a Stadium, the Dartrix, and a TCDI. Off of my next Cold Wrist. I need him to bench a ton of stuff. And I guess maybe if I had the Crobat line here, it would strictly be better. TCDI is a liability against Volcanion. Um, a simple Lysander KOs it. Crobat, I would only need to find the stage 1 instead of the stadium and the stage 1 and the stage 2 to be able to KO that Volcanion. So, yeah. Oh wow. Decides to power up the baby Volcanion. Energy there. And uh, now, she has two really big threats. No more Volcanion though, which is weird. Okay, I topped like another Versus Seeker, so she didn't bench anything else. I could N or Colrest, both give me six cards, but N refreshes my opponent's hand, so I don't want to do that. I get the Dark Tricks, I don't get... And I don't get anything beyond that. I, I guess I have access to... No, I don't have access to, Gira, to Jirachi with a level ball. I'm not running Jirachi. So I have to take the KO here. Um, she still needs... Like... Odds are Seismitoad survives this turn. I would say. Odds are Seismitoad survives this turn because 160 damage doesn't cut it. Um, I'd have 10 left, so that's pretty good. And. Hmm. Who does she follow up? Okay. So she needs another Volcanion EX and two Fire Energy to KO my Seismitoad. That's what she needs here. And it's gonna be like a War of Attrition here. No, okay, she just goes for the Volcanic Heat, which makes sense, I guess. Um, huh. The computer search is interesting here. I'm gonna level ball and find myself a Dartrix simply to discard. Um, I don't want to Lysander here. So I'm gonna discard the Lysander and the Dartrix. Although, yeah, I've already used two Lysanders. Not great. 
I will set up the CGI finally. So that ensures that I can KO the Volcanian. I can also attach an energy here. Hmm. Okay, let's try to put my opponent to sleep here. Nope. Okay, that was bad, actually. She can freely retreat. That's 110 damage, yeah. The the Hypnotoxic Laser, I should have saved for the other Volcanian. She will get a KO here. She will get a KO by retreating. Although, she will have to use the other attack if she doesn't have fire energy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fire energy already. She does decide to retreat. I can try to pick away at the Volcanion on the bench, but this is not going to be to be easy. And she goes for the 100 damage, okay. Um, yeah, I should have saved the, the Hypnotoxic Laser. That was a really big waste. Um, I'll start piling up the damage there, though. Well, uh oh, no it's fine, because if worse comes to worse, I can computer search for the muscle band and get a KO on the active Volcanion and then I can keep chipping away at the bench Volcanion EX. I think she'll be very tempted, oh, she'll be very tempted to use the, the second attack instead of powering up the Volcanions on the bench. Wow, a birch, okay. A birch into four cards. Never play birch. Okay, steam artillery does go for the 100 damage. So, I computer search here and I go for the muscle band, which is not in my deck. Whoops. Well, a hypnotoxic laser. Plus the ability, 10, yeah, that does it. Well, only the Hypnotoxic Laser does it, actually. So I guess I'll do that, because my opponent has no energy in play. So all I need to do is Hypnotoxic Laser here. I am without a hand at this point in time, but I'm in a pretty good position, I would say. Um, it'd be a waste if my opponent, well, my opponent will most likely promote this Volcanion EX. So, hopefully off of my two price, or one price card rather. <laughs> There's a muscle band, okay. <laughs> There's a muscle band. Wow, okay, that's a mistake. Yeah, um, I'm not playing against the best opponents, I guess. Um, Desigai's damage output... I don't know if it's worth it, having the Desugi and the floats and the stadiums over things like Silent Lab, over things like Super Scoop Ups. Generally don't think so. I generally don't think it is worth it. And there's a victory, yeah. Um, like, without any prior expanded experience and without any like without any real life tournament um, experience with with the current expanded format. I can only speak from when Seismitoad Crobat was a standard legal deck and how annoying it was to play against it. I generally think the extra disruption of a silent lab, the potential reuse or and healing of Super Scoop Up and the ability that the stage 1 gold bat is useful and the free treats all of those are very big pros towards using the crowbat line over um, the Desidui and like I got the super sick turn 1 double Desidui going but that's going to happen once every 20 games it's not going to happen commonly so even though I showcased it here that's an anomaly that's not the standard 
don't expect to pull that off every game. So based on all of that, I would personally say that Seismic Toad Crobat is better, but I encourage you guys to do your own testing. If you have a different opinion, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. And that's gonna be it from me guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please do a like on the video if you can and subscribe if you haven't yet because i know a lot of you haven't subscribed i can check the stats i don't know who has or hasn't subscribed but i can check the stats and i know a lot of people come to my channel week in and week out without subscribing so it would really help out the channel um we are closing into 7,000 subscribers which is unbelievable to me and it's all thanks to you guys so i will see you guys on wednesday or tomorrow if you want to see this deck in in action in spanish but on Wednesday, we get to see the deck you're seeing on your screen right now, Expanded Evelta, and it's 100% Mark Garcia's list, um, first place list from San Jose Regionals, so look forward to that. Thank you guys so much, and bye-bye.